Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the Inky Frame 7.3. So the Inky Frame 7.3 is the latest version of the Inky Frame, it's absolutely huge. So the Inky Frame 7.3 is an extra large Pico W powered e-ink photo frame home dashboard, life organizer with a glorious seven color display and wireless connectivity. There's a new e-paper screen in town and it's a biggie. The Inky Frame 7.3 has a super crisp, it really is crisp, e-ink display with 800 by 480 pixels on seven colors of goodness. We've added five user buttons with LED indicators for interacting with the display and two Quest connectors as well to plug in all the breakouts and a micro SD card slot for storing photos for your fond maritime adventure or whatever floats your boat. Every inky frame comes with some sleek metal legs so that you can stand this up on your desk without it falling over. Or if you prefer there are some other mounting holes so you can mount this however you like. There's also a battery connector on the back so you can power it without any trailing wires. And some neato power saving features mean that the batteries will last for ages. Here are some ideas for surfing suggestions. So we reckon the Mohassive screen will be useful for an ultra readable, low power consumption home automation dashboard. That's something I'm certainly going to look at. Displaying stylish photos, pop art, or even favorite comic panels. We've got a demo we can try in a minute as well for that. And some cute graphs and readouts from local or wireless connected sensors. You can also display some fascinating data from online APIs too. So what's new with this display? Running this size of display from a microcontroller is a bit of a challenge, even one that's as awesome as the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So to give it a hand, we've added an extra eight meg of SRAM, uh, which means we've got plenty of storage on board to store things like photos and so on. And that frees up some of the Pico's RAM for other things too. The multicolor EPD display uses this ingenious electrophoresis to pull up the colored particles up and down the display. They all move around up and down the display. And this e-ink paper is also ultra low power in fact it only uses power while it's actually updating the display once it's updated the display the pico w and the electronics on board so it can shut down and it's basically using very 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 little power just to keep a little clock ticking in the background so it can wake up if you press a button and this means that the batteries will last for ages it takes approximately 40 seconds to update the display but it's uh, quite interesting to watch it as it does it you sort of see the picture come to life almost like a polaroid picture so it works best with projects that don't require continuous refreshing Let's have a look at some more of the features. So we've obviously got the Raspberry Pi Pico W board and that brings with it that dual Cortex M0 Plus running 133 megahertz with 264K of RAM. It has the two megs of onboard QSPI flash memory. It can also be programmed or powered by the onboard micro USB connector. It has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi courtesy of the Pico W board. And obviously there is the massive 7.3 EPD display which is 800 by 480 pixels. The ACEP or advanced color e-paper has seven colors with black white red green blue yellow and orange they look absolutely amazing even in uh, quite strong sunlight it has really ultra wide viewing angles and the dot pitch is 0.2 by 0.2 there are five user programmable buttons on board with each has its own led indicator as well you can have a play with those in the demo in a second and there is also two quest connectors which are the quick stem qt connectors for attaching extra breakouts it has a micro sd card slot on the back and we use this if we're storing sort of large pictures without taking up the Pico's onboard RAM. And there's that extra eight meg of PS RAM as well. It also has a dedicated real-time clock, which means it can uh, go into a deep sleep and maintain the current time without having to connect to the internet to get that. It comes fully assembled, which means there's no soldering required. And it also comes with our amazing C, C++ and MicroPython libraries too. There's also a schematic on the website if you want to see how all the electronics work too. So what's in the box? So this comes in two different flavors. You can get the Inky Frame only, that comes with the Inky Frame 7.3 with a Pico W board and two metal legs. Or you can get the accessory kit as well, which includes the Inky Frame 7.3 with a Pico W board, two metal legs, three AA battery pack, three AA batteries, the micro USB cable so that you can program it, some Velcro squares so you can attach these to the battery and stick that to the back, and also a micro SD card, which is the 16 gig variety. Software wise, there's a lot that's gone on behind the scenes to make this a really, really cool product. Our C++ and MicroPython libraries include support for the Inky Frame display. And to get the best performance, you'll probably want to program in C++. But if you're a beginner, you'll probably want to use our batteries included MicroPython for ease of getting started. So you can draw on the screen using our lightweight Pico graphics library. It really is easy to use and you can display text, shapes, images, plus you can also light up individual pixels to your choice as well. We've also included some examples uh, to get you 
started. And the Inky Frame 7.3 ships preloaded with MicroPython and some fun examples with wireless connectivity to display some interesting things. To enable the Inky Frame to connect to the internet, you will need to create a little file that's called secrets.py. And inside that, you'll need to create two variables, one that's called Wi-Fi SID, and that's where your your access point name goes and then the Wi-Fi password as well. Once you've got those, you can uh, get up and running. And if you want to return to the launcher, you press A and E at the same time and it'll return to the launcher. If you want to connect extra things to your Inky frame, you can do that with uh, the two onboard Quest connectors. If your breakout has a Quest connector on board, then you can simply plug it in with a GSTSH to GSTH cable. It's very simple to plug into both ends. If you have a breakout GAN that doesn't have the uh, quick stem QT connector on it, then you can use our GST to GST cable plus the breakout garden adapter. If you want to plug in more than two breakouts at the same time, we also have an adapter for that too, uh, and you can check that out on the store in the extras tab. There's also a list of all the breakout gardens that are currently compatible with this with our C++ and MicroPython build on the website too. So here's some things that we need to note. So measurement wise, this is 176.2 millimeters by 139.2 millimeters. And the overall display dimensions are 170.2 by 111.2. And the usable area is 160 by 96. Now these color displays work best at room temperature between 15 and 35 degrees. If the screen is cold, you might find that some of the colors are less vibrant or the display looks darker than it should be. And due to the size of this panel and some esoteric practices surrounding the suspension of colored particles in the goo, you might find that there are some color variations towards the edge of the board. And this is quite normal. You might see a very slight pink tinge to the, uh, to the screen. We'll have a look when we do some of the uh, demos in a second and you might see some of that. A micro SD card can also be added for downloading of data from the internet or over Wi-Fi uh, or for logging information via wireless. It can also be used to preload some of the assets onto the uh, user interface and certain tasks like encoding, decoding, JPEGs also requires that the SD card is present so that it can work with a, a larger space that wouldn't otherwise be able to fit in the current RAM. We found that the Pico flavored C++ MicroPython is quite fussy about which SD cards that you use. So if you find that it doesn't work, try formatting it as FAT. Uh, and we also have in the accessory kits one that the 32 and the 64 gig versions as well that work fine. And the Inky Frame's onboard real-time clock means that it can go into a super deep sleep, which only draws about 20 microamps of power. On the expansion header, we also have an external trigger. If this is transitioned from low to high, which is about 3.3 volts, then the Inky Frame can wake up from its deep sleep. And this lets you add your own circuitry or wake button to make more complicated systems. So about the Pico W aboard, so our new Pico aboard products come with the Raspberry Pi Pico W built straight onto the board. And this means you get all the advantages of the RP2040 microcontroller, a speedy, fast dual core ARM processor with a dynamic growing ecosystem and a choice of different remote programming languages and methods to experiment with. And most excitingly though, Pico W brings with it wireless connectivity, which means we can connect to the internet and grab all that juicy data. So let's have a bit of a demo, shall we? Let me get over to the uh, the captain's table. So I'm going to use one of the examples, which is the board example. Let's see what happens when we run this. So you can see that the screen is flashing and it's uh, flashing each of the seven colors and it has to sort of arrange them. It's almost like a deck of cards and it has to sort of move the cards up by swapping them all round. And each different layer is a sort of different card, if you like. And that means that uh, it can take up to 40 seconds to refresh the display. So it says on there, network name, and it's connected successfully. It's got an IP address from my home router. And you can see we've got this nice yellow and green uh, effect there. And we'll just wait a couple of seconds for it to do its next bit. So it's now updating and it's going to display a message on there, which is from the board uh, API. You can see there on the, uh, the terminal, it says requested URL, HTTPS, www.boardapi.com slash API slash activity. And it'll come up with a, a suggested activity if you're bored. So this one simply says, let's see, bake a pie with some friends. And that's the cooking category. So not very exciting that one. Let's try something a bit more interesting. Okay, this is now updating the display. You can see that the images are just starting to appear now. Once that's displayed, I'll bring it a bit closer to the camera so you can have a good look at the image. So it seems to appear and then it disappears as the different colors bubble up and then all of a sudden it'll sort of pop on the screen. Here we go. Okay, that's finished updating. So let's have a look at this now. So I hold that uh, closer now. You can see there's a very slight bit of pink around the edges, but 
that's about as much as it is. And that sort of moire effect, you can see what it looks like. There's a green and red. That's actually just my camera and the LED lights bouncing off that. The actual display currently doesn't have any power to it. It's gone off into a deep sleep. So it says that obituary is the cool, <laughs> attractive, usually beloved editor of the obituary section has died. Hopefully of natural causes after a long life. They take with them the password to the here for unrevealed auto post system is <laughs> survived by 8 billion heartbroken people memorial services will be held daily uh, in all public spaces from now on you can see there's also a little qr code in the corner for xkcd so let's put that back down just there like so okay let's try another one which is the news one so again it's connecting to the internet to grab the latest news stories and uh, it's now updating the display and you'll see again, it sort of pops in as the very dark colour, the black gets updated and then all the different colours get updated after that. So there we go, that's finished updating and we can see there it says uh, Elon Musk cuts prices again as he tries to boost sales. And there's a little QR code next to each of these news stories. And if you get your mobile phone and you just uh, put it onto the camera and you uh, hover that over there, it will then pop up a little news item thing and you can... And it'll jump to the uh, the news app on that particular story. There we go. Let's try the place kitten. So again, it's connecting to the internet. Oh, there we go. So the picture's now coming through. And we'll see that cat sort of springing it into uh, to life. So if I bring this really close to the camera, you can see there, that's a really sharp image. And again, those sort of flickering effects, that's just the camera. So let me unplug this now from power. Let's go to the main screen here so you can see this too. Look how uh, sharp that is. It might be able to hold this a bit closer to the camera. And you can see there. So there's a bit of dithering. My ring lights are just getting in the way there. You can see there's a slight bit of dithering. And that's how uh, the images are displayed on something that's only got seven colours. But you can see how, how a good viewing angle this is. You can see from uh, it doesn't change depending on which angle you view it on. And currently there is nothing power in this board. So that image is on the, on the display and there's no power being provided. So just as a size comparison, this is the Inky Frame 5.7 next to the Inky Frame 7.3. So you can see there, it is pretty massive. <laughs> so if you enjoy robotics projects, electronics, Raspberry Pi stuff, then I cover all these kinds of things on my own YouTube channel, which is a youtube.com slash kevinmaclear28. So I did a project most recently on Bubo, which I have here. And Bubo is my little companion robot that is actually running quite a few Pimroni products inside. It has this Servo 2040 that controls all the servos. We have these uh, nice RGB LED rings. And um, there's also a Raspberry Pi camera module in that eye so it can detect hand gestures and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.